sixth grade, module three, lesson two, classwork. Real world positive and negative numbers and zero. So the first page is just you need to read this example to yourself and then write down any words that you don't know. And then, so you're writing down words you already know, words you wanna know, and then once you figure out the words that you want to know, if you didn't do this in class, then you can look up the words that you learned and write down their definitions. But that's not something that um, we're going to do together. So then exercises one through two say, read example one again. Number the events in the story problem. Write the number above each sentence to show the order of events. So this is kind of like language arts. We're just going to go through and read it and every time that there is um, a sentence, basically, we're going to show the order of events and how many events there were. So let's start. For Tim's 13th birthday, he received $150 in cash from his mom. So first event, he receives $150 from his mom. His dad took him to the bank to open a savings account. So next, dad takes him to the bank to open a savings account. There's another event. Tim gave the cash to the banker to deposit, deposit into the account. So next, he gives the money to the banker. The banker credited Tim's new account $150 and gave Tim a receipt. So he credits his account and he gets a receipt. One week later, Tim deposited another $25 that he had earned his allowance. So another week later, deposits $25. The next month, Tim's dad gave him permission to withdraw $35 to buy a new video game. So now he withdraws $35. Tim's dad explained that the bank would charge a $5 fee for each withdrawal from the savings account and that each withdrawal in charge results in a debit to the account. So lastly, the bank charges $5 fee for each withdrawal. Okay, number two, write each individual description below as an integer. Model the integer on the number line using an appropriate scale. Okay, so open a bank account with zero dollars. So first, he opens a bank account, there's nothing in it, he just has zero dollars. So our integer is zero because he has nothing. So let's draw our number line. And I'm just going to start it at zero. So we can just plot our point at zero because he has zero dollars. Your number line could go um, up higher than 50 if you wanted to. He makes a $150 deposit. So now he puts $150 into his bank account. So instead of being at zero where he was before, I'm just gonna, I'll count by 50s. He deposits $150, so now he has $150, so our integer would be $150. So then, credit an account for $150. So the bank teller says, okay, you have $150, and puts it in his account. So it's going to be the same as our last number line. Then, the next week, he made a deposit of $25. So he adds $25. So we can draw that. I'll count by fives. So he adds $25 to it. Then, a bank makes a charge of $5. So this time, the bank charges him $5. Instead of adding $25, they're taking out $5. So this is going to be negative 5. So if we were to plot negative 5, I'm going to put 0 more in the middle. Let's do negative 5, negative 10, 5, 10. So that's negative 5. And then Tim withdraws $35. So he takes out $35. So that's a ne another negative $35 out of his account. So 
a zero. Need to make it go a little bit further. So there would be negative 35. Well, I don't need negative zero. So here's negative 35. Example two, how hot, how cold? Temperature is commonly measured using one of two scales, Celsius or Fahrenheit. In the United States, the Fahrenheit system continues to be the accepted standard for non-scientific use. All other countries have adopted Celsius as the primary scale in use. The thermometer shows how both scales are related. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. Where is 100 degrees Celsius located on the thermometer to the right? Okay, so 100 degrees Celsius. So this side is Celsius, this side is Fahrenheit. So this only goes up to 50, so I don't even see 100 degrees Celsius on the thermometer. So we can say it's not shown. Because the thermometer only goes up to 50 degrees Celsius. B, on a vertical number line, describe the position of the integer that represents 100 degrees Celsius. So the integer, so if it were on here, it's asking where would it be? So it would be, we would start at zero and then go up all the way to I don't know, 100 might be like around here, maybe. So we could say that the integer would be 100. It's positive because it is a positive number. And it would be 100 units above zero degrees Celsius. C, write each temperature as an integer. The temperature shown on the thermometer in degrees Fahrenheit. So we're looking for what temperature is shown on here in degrees Fahrenheit. So we're looking at the Fahrenheit side of the scale. And that looks like it's about Let's see, that might be like 102, 100 maybe? Let's just go with 100. So 100 degrees Fahrenheit is shown. The temperature shown on the thermometer in degrees Celsius. Now we're gonna go to the other side. So what degrees Celsius do we have? Let's see, so there's 30s right there and 40s right there. And there's one, two, three, four, five spaces in between. So that means we're counting by twos. So 32, 34, 36, this looks like 38 degrees Celsius. The freezing point of water in degrees Celsius. So the freezing point, it says right here, in degrees Celsius is zero. So zero is freezing in degrees Celsius. You might already know what freezing in Fahrenheit is. If you don't, it's right across from there. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is freezing in uh, Fahrenheit. D, if someone tells you your body temperature is 98.6 degrees, what scale is being used? So if your body temperature is 98.6, then we would be using the Fahrenheit scale. And we know this because water boils at um, 100 degrees up here. At 100 degrees Celsius, water boils. So, I mean, we're not boiling, right? If we were 100 degrees Celsius, uh, we, it's not really possible.
And so we can say water boils. And we would not survive at that temperature. And D, what does the temperature zero degrees mean, or does the temperature zero degrees mean the same thing on both scales? So no, kind of like how 100 degrees Fahrenheit doesn't mean the same thing when we're talking 100 degrees Celsius. They're different scales. So no, we already know, we just talked about zero degrees Celsius is freezing. And 32 degrees Fahrenheit is freezing. So they are not the same. Exercises three through five, write each word under the appropriate column, positive number or negative number. So we're just gonna associate each word with either being positive or negative. So gain, if you gain something, like you're being going to be positive. Loss, that's negative. Deposit, so if you deposit, you're putting in money to your bank account, so it's gonna go up. If you get a credit, you're also getting more money. So they're crediting you $5, then you're getting an extra $5, so it's gonna go up. Debit, um, means that you're losing money. Charge, so if you're charged $5, then you have to pay $5. Let's see, below zero, that's negative. Withdraw, if you're taking, if you're withdrawing money from your account, you're taking it out. So it's gonna, going to go down, be negative. If you owe someone money, then you're in the negatives. And if you receive money, so say you receive $5 as a birthday gift, then that is positive. Write an integer to represent each of the following situations. A company loses $345,000 in 2011. So they lost money, so they're down negative $345,000. You earn $25 for babysitting, so that's positive. You earned it, you got it, $25. Jacob owes his dad $5, so he does not get the money, he has to pay the money, negative $5. The temperature, is at the, sun, the temperature at the sun surface is about 5,500 degrees Celsius. So that's positive, 5,500. The temperature outside is four degrees below zero. So if it's four degrees below zero, then it is negative four. And a football player lost 10 yards when he was tackled. So he lost 10 yards, so he's negative 10. Describe a situation that can be modeled by the integer negative 15. Explain what zero represents in the situation. Um, so maybe you owe someone money, maybe you, we can, just go back to owing your dad. Like Jacob owes his dad $5. We could say, I owe my mom $15. So let's say, explain what the zero represents in the situation. Well, zero would mean that I don't owe my mom anything. That is all.